Welcome back to this new inspirational video. Today I wanted to go over The Secret of Power. It's a small chapter written by Robert Collier, about three pages long. And it's actually, you know, if you look at this book, well, it's not really easy to see, but it's actually very tiny pages as well. So it's not going to take you that long. But it contains some ideas that are really helpful in order to understand, again, better angles from which to use our minds in order to get the best results possible for ourselves. Now it started out by saying, There lived until recently in one of the big eastern cities a woman whose husband had died and left her nearly 100 million dollars. She had unlimited power in her hands, yet she used none of it. She had unlimited wealth, yet she got no more from it than if it were in the thousands instead of millions. She knew nothing of her power, of her wealth. She was insane. That's just what he wrote about her. <laughs> he went on to say, You have just as great power in your hands without this poor woman's excuse for not using it. Well, let's not say that we are insane, though. I mean, we're just perhaps a little ignorant about our powers, but we can always learn. And he said, You have access to unlimited ideas, unlimited energy, unlimited wealth. The open sesame is through your subconscious and superconscious mind. It's always interesting that he uses the term super conscious mind and genie of your mind and stuff like that. Usually in most literature about the mind that I've read so far, they only talk about the conscious and subconscious mind. Very rarely do you see authors write about super conscious or the genie of your mind. And I think we don't really have to worry about it that much if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Super conscious mind is basically another way of again saying that there is also a much greater, bigger, more powerful spirit to which we are connected throughout the universe itself. It's basically the spirit behind all of creation, also known as God. You could say that is the superconscious mind. And we can connect with that, of course, if we learn to open up our own minds. So that's what we've been talking about all along, and that's what we keep reminding people of. But he did say, so long as you limit yourself to superficial conditions, so long as you are a mere carrier of water for those around you who do use their minds, you are in no better position than the beasts of burden. This paragraph right here is essentially reminding us that if we, for example, have a job, a day job that we do not necessarily like, but we're doing it because we know it brings in money, we are essentially, well, working for somebody that is using their minds. And this happens to many people out there. Now, it doesn't mean that you should instantly stop having your job and then have no means of income for the time being. It is important to, of course, have income. But if you do have bigger dreams, you have to stay honest with yourself and keep yourself focused on those dreams instead so that you can grow to watch it. Because otherwise, you're going to stay stuck in a reality where you're only working for somebody else without ever perhaps realizing your full potential and your own dreams uh, to begin with and this is a sad fact of life is that many people do live like that they don't go for what they want they're basically going along with what somebody else wanted the boss of the company for example wanted to have their company they needed people to work for them the way that i look at it, if i run my own company i would hire people that are passionate about the things that i need done in the company so that that way these people are also benefiting of course that is the most beautiful way of doing business and having people work for you. Because then your own business becomes like a ladder, a stepping stone for them towards bigger and greater things for themselves. But you see, that's not how it usually goes when it comes down to having a job. And that's just one example that I figured kind of ties into what he just said. He also said, so long as you limit yourself to superficial conditions. What does he mean by that? Well, he means that by that, that living through the senses. So long as you use your senses to decide on what you're going to think about and whether something is possible or not, you're going to stay stuck. But if you start opening up your mind, your imagination, and start focusing on visions of fulfilled desires, well then, you're going to outgrow it. This is the pattern that you're going to have to start seeing in your own world if you want to make the best use of metaphysical teachings. He went on to say that the secret of power lies in understanding the infinite resources of your own mind. When you begin to realize that the power to do anything, to be anything, to have anything, is within yourself, then and then only will you take your proper place in the world. And that's very true, because once you grasp this, 
it's once you really grasp this it's also the moment that you dare to go for those dreams that you've always had inside of your soul and then you take your proper place in the world meaning then you're doing your own unique things in the world that you were meant to do all along that's very beautiful once it dawns upon you that you can still embrace such a future for yourself it doesn't matter how old you are most people might say well i'm already too old this is also a tragedy to me because then it's like saying well because i'm so old it's also no point in actually giving it a shot any longer and instead you want to keep your mind open to these ideas and keep expressing them to the best of your ability no matter your age because that way you're at least be able to enjoy the time you still have left and you also still are able to discover more and more about the power that lies within yourself all along so it's like giving up even though you know better that's a very common mistake people make as well and it has everything to do with the old programming of the mind and how we've been raised not to really go for our dreams but no matter the age young or old at one point we all have to decide we're going to do it no matter what if that decision is not made we'll never be able to embrace and work with these powers that these authors are all talking about because it all lies within ourselves and it's up to us to decide whether we're going to make use of it or not now he went on to say a little further on that nothing splendid has ever been achieved except by those who dare to believe that something inside of them was superior to circumstances there's something inside of you that's superior to your circumstances do you realize that what is that something it's your ability to think and imagine beyond what your senses are now telling you or showing you so i could be sitting here and actually this is a very good example i mean i like to tie this back to building a youtube channel because you're watching this on youtube most likely well my senses might show me a certain amount of subscribers and views and this and that if i look at those results to my senses then i might think well i might think all sorts of contradicting ideas that i don't even want to talk about or think about right now because that's how negative they would be i simply do not really focus on that at all it might seem strange and bizarre but the thing is i i simply focus through my imagination and especially with my thinking on where i want to go what sort of result that i'm after with this channel and i simply focus on that day in and out so when i become aware to the senses to the five senses right of where i'm at right now then i know that at times it might not show me physical evidence that i'm on the right track or that i'm already there and you see, that's where the conflict starts to happen for people, is that they have the dream, but then they look at the results, and then the results tell them, you're not there, you're not really progressing as fast enough or quick enough, we are impatient to a certain extent all the time, and then we give up on the dream. But you want to keep focusing yourself on the dream, on the vision instead. So you have something to inspire towards, to grow towards all the time. This is what you have to understand, that it's a creative process that works from the imagination down to the physical, instead of letting the physical control the mind and therefore the imagination because what's going to happen is that people are going to build all sorts of limited ideas about themselves based on the current circumstances and yet we have a power inside of us that is superior to circumstances and that power again is the ability to imagine and think far beyond what you're observing physically speaking and then as you do that you'll find ways on how to actually grow there and how to make that happen on the physical side of life all over again that is very important if we want to discover the secret of our real powers so people go on with their daily grind with the gaunt specters of sickness and need ever by their side until death comes as a welcome relief are you going to be one of those or will you listen to that inner consciousness of power and find the kingdom of heaven that is within you for whatever you become conscious of will be quickly brought forth into tangible form that line is so powerful whatever you become conscious of will quickly be brought forth into tangible form do you understand that do you understand that the reason that you might be stuck or haven't yet achieved great success is that you simply have been unable maybe up until this point to become actually conscious of what that means but you can always become conscious of it if you apply the power if you direct your mind at will so what does it mean well the more you become conscious of what it is that you want 
the easier it becomes to put it into tangible form, to give expression to it on the physical side of your life. This is so powerful. Even just recently, a friend of mine told me this, that for a while he had been thinking about something he really wanted, and he knew that he had to make it more clear to himself. So he had some idea at least of what he wanted, but then he had to make it more clear to himself, like, okay, what is this all going to be about? How am I going to execute this purpose? And then the more he made that clear for himself, the more he felt this hope, this excitement, this passion, this sort of confirmation. I know this is what I want, so I'm going to go for it. And that's exactly what can happen for you. That once you become conscious of what you want, if you make it very clear in your mind, well then it will be brought forth into tangible form. Very rapidly, because you can't help it. You can't stop yourself from doing it. If you can finally see how you can give expression to your dream, if you finally became aware of it, because you've opened your mind far enough, well then you can't help but act on it, then it would actually feel silly not to do it, because you would know, wait a minute, if I do this, I will get what I want, so let's go for it. Now Robert went on to say, don't judge your ability by what you have done in the past. Your work before this has been done with the help of your conscious mind alone, perhaps. Now add to that the infinite knowledge at the disposal of your superconscious mind, and what you have done is as nothing, to what you will do in the future. The superconscious mind is again the ability to connect with the spirit of life itself. This all happens within yourself and it's not that complicated as it may sound. Basically once you are so consumed by desire of what you want, the universe itself will always inspire you and that comes from the superconscious mind, you could say, from the mind of the universe, from the mind of God itself. So that's all you really have to grasp and do for yourself if you want to get some results. He went on to say that knowledge does not apply itself, it is merely so much static energy. You must convert it into dynamic energy by the power of your thought. The difference between the $25 a week clerk and the $25,000 a year executive is solely one of thought. Now of course these income numbers are totally different than in our day and age, but this was written back in the 1920s. So, you know, everything was a lot different, but still he says the difference is solely one of thought. The clerk may have more brains than the executive, frequently he has an actual weight of grey matter. He may even have a far better education, but he doesn't know how to apply his thought to, the, to get the greatest good from it. If you have brains, use them. If you have skill, apply it. The world must profit by it, and therefore, you. If you have brains, use them, right? If you have skills, apply it. You're going to become aware of all sorts of things that you are passionate about and that you have the skills for expressing in your life if you but obey them. If you but dare to think on a massive scale on how you can serve humanity with them. Then you'll see it all open up for you, all sorts of new opportunities through which you can become successful and find fulfillment throughout your lifetime. We all have inspired moments when we see clearly how we may do great things. How we may accomplish wonderful undertakings but we do not believe in them enough to make them come true. An imagination which begins and ends in daydreaming is weakening to character. Make the daydreams you have come true. Make them so clear and distinct that they impress themselves upon your subconscious mind. Again, with the subconscious mind, you have to understand we talk about the emotional mind. So when he says, make the daydreams come true, make them so clear and distinct that they impress themselves upon your subconscious mind, what we're talking about here is that if you know what you want, you're going to have to become emotionally involved with it. That's how you impress it upon your subconscious mind. So when you know what you want, you're going to have to feel emotionally excited and full of belief and determination, full of faith that you can make this happen. That is really what's missing with many people is that they know what they want consciously, but subconsciously on an emotional level, they don't feel excited about it at all because they're still full of worried doubts and fears on whether they can make it happen. You want to change those negative emotions around to positive ones of power, of faith, of joy, of optimism, of gratitude, of love. And if you do that, then you're impressing this dream upon your subconscious mind. It is in combination of focusing on the dream while feeling these good emotions that you're impressing it deeper and deeper into your subconscious mind. You start to feel the dream burn almost symbolically throughout your whole body, throughout your whole being. The dream starts to drive you, then drive every aspect of you in order to make it real. 
that is when you know it has impressed itself upon your subconscious mind. Now there's nothing wrong with daydreaming, except that most of us stop there. We don't try to make the dreams come true. The great inventor Tesla dreams every new machine complete and perfect in every particular before ever he begins his model for it. Mozart dreamed each of his wonderful symphonies complete before ever he put a note on paper. But they didn't stop with the dreaming. They visualized those dreams and then brought them into actuality. We lose our capacity to have visions if we do not take steps to realize them. Power implies service, so concentrate all your thought on making your visions of great deeds come true. Thinking is the current that runs the dynamo of power. To connect this current so that you can draw upon universal supply to your subconscious mind is to become a superman. Do this and you will have found the key to the solution of every problem of life. And that's the end of this chapter called The Secret of Power. So what did he say here? What do we want to grasp? Well, we want to grasp that the way to gain power in our lives, the power to make stuff happen, is through the imagination. It's by visualizing, imagining what we're after, the result that we want to manifest. And as we keep ourselves hooked up and focused to that vision, we will start to generate power from within ourselves. Especially if you start to believe that you can make it happen. This has to be part of your mentality, of your focus, that you feel and believe and know you can make this happen. And that is then what sets up this power within yourself called desire. This desire starts to expand and magnify for the realization of your dream because you already know you can make it happen. And then as you do that, you gain the power to actually make it happen. To take the actions, to do the things, to draw the inspiration you need in order to make it so. That is the secret of power, to understand that it all lies within your mind. And if we look outside of ourselves, we don't see the power all the time that we need in order to make something happen. But if we look inside our minds, we will find all the guidance and inspiration we'll ever need in order to make anything happen we want. As long as we have a calm, open mind. Then this all will work for you. And that's the beauty of it all. You can start right where you are with whatever you've got. You only have to use your imagination and the rest will be attracted to you. The ways will be shown to you as you stay focused, as you stay loyal to your greatest heart's desires. And then one day, if you're now stuck in a job you don't like, you'll be in a position to leave that job and to go in bu into business for yourself, perhaps. Or to change jobs, to at least do something that makes you feel like you're doing something meaningful with your time. To the level that you feel like this is what I was meant to do. So we're never selling ourselves short any longer. We are actually making the best of, and most of ourselves to the extent that we were meant to do it as an individual in this lifetime. We all have these beautiful dreams, let's make them happen. We're gonna do that by applying what we just heard and understanding the secret of power that we have over our own lives and destinies by the right use of our own minds. Now if you're new to this channel consider subscribing to receive inspirational videos on a regular basis. And with that being said, dear viewer, never forget that we are the dreamers. Thank you.